Kenya's leather industry generates about 100 million U.S. dollars every year, but the potential is 10 times more. Cashing in on this growth is Chabet Mutai, the founder of Wazawazi Fashion House, an Afrocentric luxury leather brand. Take a look. Chabet Mutai left her lucrative job at the World Bank as a contractor after seeing gaps in the African market in job creation. In that development work, I was exposed to a lot of opportunities that are missed in Africa because, you know, we are, you know, maybe waiting for something to change. And I kept asking, surely, is this the solution for Africa? Why can't we do something ourselves differently on the grounds that we can able to attribute to ourselves as the result of our intervention? So I figured maybe by creating jobs, coming up with, a, with something that I like because I was definitely going, not going to leave a, a good um, employment space to do something that I didn't like. So it's really important to you know, focus on what you like or enjoy. With 10,000 US dollars from her savings, Chebet created Waza Wazi Fashion House, an Afrocentric leather luxury brand. The name, which is translated to mean have an open mind, began as a clothing line in 2012. Waza Wazi specializes in high-end leather goods. Primarily when we started, we were only making bags and bag accessories, but as we have grown, we've extended, you know, started to spread our arms into furniture collectible pieces um, and uh, deco pieces. So slowly trying to add, diversify our portfolio beyond luggage. The business seeks to tell the African story in a creative way and is attracting a niche of clients both locally and internationally. Our clientele is mostly middle class Kenyans who appreciate good art and figure why do I need to go to UK for example to buy a, a good bag, why can't I just get it here? And that has helped us grow because that nostalgic identity of being African, especially if you leave the country and come back, especially the ones who leave and come back, no, not so much the ones who live abroad, but the ones who have had the opportunity to travel, that, that, that pride in their identity has always kept them coming back. In its four years of operation, Waza Wazi has distributed its products online, only opening its first physical store three months ago. Primarily we've been online social media and then of course the power of, you know, referrals. You know, people would talk about the product abroad, send their friends over. So that has been the greatest support for us, referrals and networks. And then we've had a few distributors. Now we have uh, maybe two. One at the at the at the um, current hub. So we have somebody having stocking the products there, and then a, a, a boutique hotel in Lamu. The government of Kenya, through the Ministry of Industrialization, plans to open a 500 hectare leather park in Nairobi worth over 70 million US dollars. A big concern, however, is the quality of leather produced, which, according to Chebet, has been a big challenge in the industry. The minute we have a leather park, it means the demand for leather will grow exponentially. We're already struggling with our small consumptions here. So, what happens when the leather park comes on? Well, that is great. I look forward to the leather pack, but I'm curious, what is the trade-off? And then what about training of people? For us to be able to fetch top dollar with uh, products made here, the product has to be good. Are we ready to compete favorably by making good quality leather goods? In the next five years, Waza Wazi not only aspires to export and set up hubs across Africa, but also impact the continent positively. In that same period, we'd like to be able to create greater impact by sustainably creating jobs for people. The only way our continent will change is we can, if we can all pull in the same direction to lift more people out of poverty. And the indicators are there that because more people are in gainful employment, say more children are in school. And therefore, we as Wazawazi will be able to quantify our intervention because of the number of 
good jobs that we create, good quality employment, and by extension, creating social impact beyond our workshops.